uh, we start today's uh, market talk markets are cyclical bad stuff tends to follow good stuff and vice versa eventually uh, if you see nifty year to date is moved 3.55% in one year 24.12% three year 48.94% five years 97.26% that means in 5 years it has nearly doubled not bad considering we have had covid some bear markets in between in 22 23 in the last 5 years or so hence stock market is random especially over the short run hence think long term but the bigger issue is what is long term because everybody has different versions of long term so uh, buy at low levels and then you would be you know relatively safer okay market outlook uh, there is a general caution in us reflected in repricing of rate cut expectations to only one reduction in 2024 after policy makers said it may take longer for inflation to reach the 2% target now uh, most of the central banks today are data dependent markets are constantly adjusting to expectations to each piece of data that comes out one slightly softer retail inflation print for us market and it took it to a new high now the other issue is biden's uh, biden administration's decision to aggressively raise tariffs on some chinese goods will hurt global trade and growth us has increased tariffs on chinese imports particularly electric vehicles to boost domestic manufacturing in critical industries geopolitical tensions arise from posturing and competing interests of nations as investors we have to strike a balance between overreacting and underreacting to these challenges so any time there is a geopolitical issue you would have seen markets typically overreact to geopolitical events and after that with the initial imprint tending to be quickly reversed once the situation seems to be not that bad or doesn't affect the earnings to that level now coming to few stocks mahindra and mahindra plans to invest over the next 3 years a total of 27000 crore in its automotive business including 12000 crore in electric mobility arm this funding will allow mahindra and mahindra to expedite its slow transition to electric mobility and catch up with tata motors it will launch six electrical suvs in january to march 2025 it has aggressive plans even for the internal consumption engine portfolio a lower cost would lead to increased demand for companies involved in manufacturing installation and maintenance of bess battery energy storage systems such as excite amaraja hbl power system tata power siemens and abb now there has been a roughly around 59 to 60% decline in battery energy so storage systems tariffs uh, so large scale rechargeable batteries designed to store electrical energy especially in the renewable sector will be required it has crucial role in this sector uh, that is renewables because the renewable energy is, avail uh, is uh, available only for uh, a certain time of the day now the decline in these prices is due to increase in battery cell prices due to fall in prices of lithium and other key battery materials lower costs will lead to increase in demand and this is one uh, place where everybody is investing money metal prices have taken heart from signs of recovery in chinese economy chinese industrial output has accelerated and on friday chinese authorities lowered down payments and mortgage rates to proper property sector and that is leading to rally in all metals uh, and their uh, and all commodities also global funds are betting on india's longer maturity bonds now this is uh, one thing which people are not noticing even if you see the indian bond yields also went down last week uh, indian bonds are slated to join jp morgan's emerging market index in june it will attract inflows of up to around 40 billion dollars and also rbi is also expected to pivot to an easing policy with rate cuts in maybe third oblique fourth quarter this uh, in this financial year our two catalysts will boost arpu growth of telecom companies first is the 
actively implementing tariff hikes second and increasing proportion of high value 4g 5g customers so airtel's arpu have reached 209 rupees already and uh, they are already targeting around 250 rupees so that is the reason why the stock is rallying uh, now coming to certain technical issues uh, what happened in the us was the cpi for april increased at a slower pace than anticipated and the core cpi cooled for the first time uh, so what it led to was if you see here the lowering of this is a weekly chart of us 10 year the bond yields came down from 4.5 to around 4.4 level and uh, then now that rising trend has been uh, reversed and they are heading headed lower now based on further uh, data and all that so presently that rising trajectory of bond yields has reversed now what it uh, also led to was the fall in the dollar index so dollar index which was again rising has uh, come down and has come down to 104 odd levels so let's see from where it uh, moved from here the fall in dollar index always is positive for commodities brent crude prices also were coming down but rose i think there is some opec meet and all uh, so it will be decide uh, they will decide on future prices and all so there was slight rise but it has not gone out of control uh based on falling yields the gold again shot up it went back to 2400 it had corrected a bit to 2300 levels but it went to 2400 dollars to an ounce again and silver i think in india yesterday uh, or saturday or yeah yesterday it had reached 90000 rupees uh nasdaq uh, was up uh it climbed around 2% uh, last week and based on the lower bond yields and possibility of rate cut so now it has made a fresh all time high and it is heading higher uh dow crossed the 40 40000 level uh this was based on firstly uh the lower bond yields and secondly good earnings from walmart uh which pushed it past 40000 so which shows that the us consumption is good hence the economy is uh, doing reasonably well and the rates are expected to come down so right now this is the basic thought process now uh coming to india vix now uh india vix uh, which was rising has stopped rising and now it is declining so if you see in fact uh it made a low roughly around uh, 70 not on saturday but uh, saturday at the end of the day the bond uh, the premiums were uh, the option premiums were falling so that rise in wix trajectory has right now stopped now let's see where it goes from here uh, to be able to break the trend it has to fall below this 20 ema that is 17 or level if it goes below that then the trend will again change now uh, if you see here Uh, this is a nifty weekly chart uh nifty on the weekly chart took support at 20 ema and bounced from there uh last week nifty was up 1.86% last week and has reached that 24 22500 so that trend of higher highs and higher lows has not been uh broken and if you see the daily chart uh, if you see here all five days uh, all six days you can say 1 2 3 4 5 6 days of last week nifty was higher it has taken support at the uh, 100 ema and then has bounced back from there uh, so it is right now heading uh, higher only so there is no reason to be worried about and now if you see the hourly chart uh we had uh, so we started on uh, 13th this week it rose up then there was those uh, big red candles and then on 16th uh, there was a short covering or uh, long and wind uh, sorry uh, short, uh, a lot of longs were added and the nifty went up and now it is it has reached that 22500 it is above the uh, 50 hourly moving average so till the time it is above this 22300 odd levels it is uh, positive so the reason to be worried would be if it comes below 22 300 level 
Nifty Bank, uh, it was up around, uh, I think, 1.6, 4, 4, 6% uh, uh, last week. Again, it has bounced from the 20 EMA on the weekly chart and has uh, recovered nearly half of the fall of the previous week. Uh, it also went down to uh, 100 EMA. Uh, that is roughly around uh, 47,000 levels and then has bounced back from there. And all the all days it was it ended positively, and so right now on the daily chart it is above the 20 EMA. So till the time it is above these levels, it is positive. Uh, let's see from where uh, it goes from here. It had gone up to around roughly 50,000 levels and then corrected very sharply from there. Uh, now. The recovery was basically due to HDFC Bank. One of the reasons it recovered from that low, uh, made a green candle, but it has to cross above this 1525, 1520 level for some strength. All these moving averages are converging here. So this is the uh, resistance area from where it uh, reversed also. Hence, this is the zone it has to cross. Once it is able to cross that, then only the uh, moment will come. Uh, the other stock which gave strength was Reliance. Uh, it has uh, taken back the losses and has generally recovered from 2800 level. Now it is above the 20 EMA. So uh, we'll see whether it can recover because this will determine the uh, course for Nifty after this. Uh, all the defense stocks and the PSUs and all were uh, in mo big momentum last week. One of them was Bharat Dynamics. Uh, it made a fresh all-time high, a big green candle. So similar charts would be you would see in all of them. Uh, this is because of many reasons. Could be pre-buying or interest in defense stocks and PSUs or whatever it is. But these are the. This is a sector which is in momentum. Uh, Mid-cap index made a fresh all-time high, and this would have helped all the portfolios. And uh, so if you see. Uh, NSC's market cap was up 3.45% while Nifty was only up 1.86%. So it implies that basically the portfolios have done well. And also now if we see the, sorry, the small cap index, it has also recovered most of the fall. And now it is somewhere closer to the all time high. And it can still go higher from here uh, if the momentum is good. Uh, if you have seen all this, you, you will find that uh, Nifty is outperforming Nifty Bank and market-wide positions are around 41% now, highest in several quarters. That means people are taking up positions uh, in anticipation confidently. But higher amount of positions in FNO brings volatility. Uh, last week, the advanced decline ratio overall was around 1.86. So that means more stocks were advancing than decline declining. Uh, what I have observed is the lower levels are seeing the buying interest. I also refer to it that Indian bond yields are falling, which is very good because the, the debt portfolio will also be doing well. Uh, Monday session last week was the lowest for Nifty and Nifty Bank. Hence, the, it is very clear that the trend is positive now. Uh, the other point is if you see the FNO, Index turnover is higher while stock turnover is lower because people are, uh, you know, playing safer because the requirement of margins for index uh, trading is lower. Uh, as the US yields are falling and the dollar is also going weak, it is evident that the metal stocks are expected to keep going up along with gold and silver. Now I'll cover a few uh, stocks. Uh, first is... Uh, Aditya Billa Capital. Uh, now, ABCL has exhibited a significant improvement in operation metrics across all business segments in FI24. FI25 will see an upstick in uh, growth, lower credit costs, and better return ratios. The asset management business is likely to churn out better profitability driven by an improvement in revenue as well as cost rationalization. VNB margins, which are there for life insurance, and persis persistency margins continue to improve. Uh, their life insurance business commenced business with newer partner banks like IDFC First and Bank of Maharashtra. 
so has to get some more selling during the previous quarter it signed a corporate agency agreement with excess bank which will commence commence sourcing business in may uh, the drag on consolidated pack from other segments such as health insurance will decline improving overall profitability expect a consolidated pack cagr of 16% over fi24 to 26 Uh, just for reference, uh, the expected PAC CAGR of Bajaj Finance is around twenty percent. So just keep that in mind. The thrust on cross-selling investment in digital and leveraging one ABC will lead to healthy return ratios. May result in a consolidated ROE of fourteen percent in FI twenty-six. Company added one seventy-nine branches in FI twenty-four for a total branch count of. One four seven four. The company's branch expansion is targeted at driving penetration into tier three and four towns and new customer segments. Uh, the ABCD app went live. It offers a portfolio of more than twenty products and services such as payments, loans, insurance, and investments. Now, if you see their uh, quarterly results, uh, now if you see here the net income, this is for the NBFC arm, has been constantly going up. this is their primary business uh and if you see the consolidated earnings also they are also uh, going up uh, every quarter and if you see over the years it has gone up so growth has been roughly around 52% over the last one over fi23 so the full one year earning it is uh, much much uh, higher so this is roughly 51 this is million so 51 uh, 5100 crores Now, if you see the pad growth, last quarter was around thirty-three uh, percent. Total on the lending side, total loans are at roughly this is one point two lakh crore, and it has changed changed year on year is up thirty percent, and HFC the housing finance part has also improved thirty-three percent. nims are uh, good though declining but that is normal but still they are reasonably strong and the asset quality is uh, good it has not deteriorated it is becoming better for the amc uh, business the quarterly average qaaum quarterly average asset under management has improved it has now roughly around 3.4 lakh crore and year on year change is roughly 20.8% uh, life insurance 13th one persistency around 88% so which is also improving so all businesses are now uh, rebounding now if you see here nbfc loan book delivered a healthy q and q growth so loan book is up around 30% hfc loan book uh, housing finance loan book grew 33% year on year so again uh, it's on a upward trajectory so there is a business transformation which is taking place amc segment average aum increased sequentially so again up around 44% and amc profit margin has been stable so uh, what it is expected to do it is expected to improve its performance over the next 2 years or so as i showed you so the point to be noted here is is that the present book value is around 103 and the fi25 expected book value is around 115 and 113 fi26 so 130 this stock is right now around 220 so it is still below two times price to book hence uh, relatively cheaper with a business performance improving as compared to bajaj finance which in fi26 wise is around 3.5 plus so you can see the relative valuation here uh, roe is also expected to improve over uh, next one or two years now if you see one of the uh, one of the estimates of some of some of the parts for various parts of his businesses to see here it has the major uh, part of the business is nbfc then housing finance asset management life insurance health insurance and smaller part is others so if you see here uh the weaker ones that is life insurance and health insurance are improving hence the some of the part valuation which has been worked out by somebody is around 260 for fi26 earnings so it is still uh, has got a headway for another 20% from here now if you see the chart 
uh, you see, it was floundering at this 160, 170 odd levels for most of the 2023. And then after the restructuring and improvement in business performance from March onwards, it has taken off. This is the weekly chart. And it had gone up to around 240 plus, but it's corrected. In my opinion, somewhere closer to 200 odd. Uh, it's a buying opportunity for uh, long-term investment investors uh, because of the relative valuations. Uh, so if you have seen Conservative revenue has grown 32% year on year. PAT has grown 33% year on year. NBFC loan book went up 31%. Loans to retail, SME, and HNI customers is going up. Uh, housing finance book is up 33%. Asset quality has improved. Hence, uh, things are okay. GWP, that is the gross return premium of health insurance, grew 36% year on year. Uh, market share among standalone health insurance has risen from 10.4% to 11.2%. Uh, and the drag or the losses from health insurance will decline. Hence, uh, keep this stock in uh, view. The other uh, project, other stock which is in the capital goods space is Kalpatru projects. Now, uh, there are so many uh, capital goods uh, stocks or companies each have their niche uh, or a specific area of operation so one should not just group them together but see them as per their area of operation now uh, here kalputru uh, they are basically in transmission and distribution creation of buildings and factories oil and gas and tunneling hence uh, these are the segments on which they operate now revenue ebitda PAT grew 17, 29, and 52% year on year in fourth quarter. Revenue growth was led by healthy project execution in transmission and distribution, water and urban infra segments. Uh, order inflow grew 108% year on year to 11,960 crore, including an order from Saudi Aramco. Uh, strong traction is being witnessed in both domestic and international markets on the back of re renewable energy investments. Outlook remains healthy for building and factories. BNF is building in factories, oil and gas, and urban infra segments, while it could be noticeably weaker for railways uh, because they are not really bidding much in the railway segment. In building and factories, it is seeing strong traction in data centers, airports, real estate, industrial capex, etc. International subsidiaries, they have two subsidiaries, LMG and Fastel. Uh, LMG is based in Sweden and Fastel is based in Brazil, are both sitting on healthy order books, roughly 2,000 crore and 1,500 crore respectively. FI25 expected revenue growth is 20%, profit before tax margin at 5%, working capital below 100 days, and interest costs as percentage of sales below 2%, and CapEx they are expected to do around 500 crore. Uh, valuation re-rating for Kalpatru is being driven by constant reduction in pledging, as well as large side large sized oil and gas order wins so if you see their uh, quarterly performance the revenue change was around 17 percent year on year and constantly the revenue is going up though it was below the estimates and that is the reason why the stock is corrected because the estimate was higher uh, the margins are year on year better uh, by 0.7 percent but generally in the seven eight percent range and expected to remain in that range uh pat profit after tax though it was lower than estimate by four percent but year on year it was up 52 percent uh, they have seen fi24 inflows a uh, strong order inflow of roughly uh, 30 000 crore 300 billion rupees in the various segments uh TND, urban infra, railways, oil and gas, water, building and factories, etc. Uh, order book of total order book is around 58,000 crore, fully diversified, if you see here, into various segments. So they are not dependent on one part. But basically, it is in transmission and distribution, building and factories, and water. Fourth quarter order inflow includes inflow from oil and gas segment. Uh, they got these uh, higher uh, 
uh, orders basically from uh, Saudi Aramco, so which has improved uh, their total order book. Revenue execution is ramping up across segment except railways. So uh, their revenues have been higher in this fourth quarter. That means execution has improved. EBITDA margin is up 70 uh, basis point, but it will remain in this 8% category. Uh, PAT is led by revenue and margin growth. So profit after tax has improved. Uh, so the estimates have been actually made lower because of the execution issue. But if you see that, despite that, they are expected to do around 73.9 uh, EPS in FY26, though it is slightly lower, but still 70, 73. Now, you can easily uh, value them at 15, 16 to 20 times P. So that would take them to around 1200 to 1500. Now, uh, so if you see here, uh, they have various segments, uh, transmission and distribution, uh, where they're showing year-on-year -year growth, revenue growth and uh, order backlog is there, building and factories again, but the biggest is transmission and distribution, water and urban infra again, same, it expected to grow, railways, oil and gas. So this is the one where the maximum growth has been there in FI24. Uh, where uh, revenues, etc., are expected to grow in terms of orders. Uh, hence, order backlog, if you see here, uh, is around 58,000 uh, crores. This is in millions. So, order backlog is 58,000 crore. And total revenue growth is expected to be around 25 to 26% over the uh, next uh, two years. So, the as I brought out, the EPS is expected to be around 73-74 in FI26 and 53-odd in uh, FI25. And uh, if you see the return ratios, uh, they are expected to be improving because of the better asset quality and uh, better management of money and all that. Uh, and if you see here, the PE is coming down now from 40s level. It has come down to 20s and 60s. If the stock price is right now here, then it, it is becoming relatively cheaper with as compared to other stocks in the in this sector. Uh, the promoter pledging has considerably come down in the recent quarters, and that is one of the reasons why there is a re-rating of the stock because promoters have been reducing the uh, their pledge share, so it has reduced the risk. Now, if you see here, uh, this uh, stock has risen after 2024 onwards, based on the order book actually, uh, which they got orders. So it has nearly doubled now uh, from around 600 odd levels it used to be to around 1200. And uh, the, the, the valuation is not out of the park. The only thing is that uh, it dipped in that last dip to still at the, at the level of around 1000, 150, 60 levels. So it has not dipped much because of the uh, better potential of this stock. So every dip is a buying opportunity here. Uh, I have told you Q4 was below estimate. So that is why there was a dip also along with the correction. Uh, 58,000 crore order book, uh, 17,000 crore they executed in FI24. So execution of these large orders from Saudi Aramco is... 36 to 42 months with EBITDA margins of 8 to 10 percent. So their margins are also in that 8 percent. But there is a lower working capital requirement from uh, these orders from uh, Saudi Aramco. And uh, because of better customer advances, and they are trying to improve the collection of money from railways, which will improve their ROE and ROC over the uh, next uh, few years, as I showed you. Now, the last stock I'll cover today is Keynes. Uh, I have covered it earlier also. I just wanted to cover as per uh, in terms of valuation and other issues. Uh, strong guidance for FI25, 60% revenue growth, 15% EBITDA margin, 10% plus PAT margin, strong fourth quarter and FI25 guidance led to large earnings upgrade and re-rating. Order book is roughly 4,120 crore to be executed over 15 months with a mix similar to revenue mix, now getting longer period orders also. 
एवरेज ऑर्डर इनफ्लो पर मंथ इज अराउंड थ्री ट्वेंटी करोड इन फोर्थ क्वार्टर वर्सेज टू एटी करोड इन थर्ड क्वार्टर ओसैट एक्सपेक्ट द expect to receive uh, government approval soon after formation of new government osat business to contribute meaningfully in the next 3 years this is related to semiconductor business uh, it has signed mous with state governments of karnataka and telangana to set manufacturing facilities for osat and pcb manufacturing revenue growth was led by industrial and ev and aerospace outer space and strategic electronics and railways expects to sign a last contract with an mnc mnc in the medical equipment segment so if you see here uh, year on year the revenue growth was 75% in the quarter and 60% year on year uh, for the full year sorry uh, eps has also improved year on year by 79% and Q and Q by eighty eighty percent. EBITDA margins have improved. Actually, in all the EMS businesses, the things to be seen is basically the EBITDA margins because that drives the profitability. Uh, even if the revenues are not going up, and rest everything, PAT margins are improving. Uh, profit uh, before tax margins are impro improving. So uh, uh, this is a good sign for the company. that means they are adding more value to the work they are doing and not just simply assembling now if you see their revenue mix automate motive is around 23% now uh, industrial is 55 aerospace defense and others medical railways iot it consumer etc are lower railways around 11 uh, revenue mix if you see here uh, is there so basically it is oem pcba and lower is oem box build uh, smaller is odm and product engineering in iot solutions uh, revenue annual growth trend if you see here it was going up around 50 60% it will uh, it will uh, it will go slow but still reasonably good uh, in next few years annual growth and similarly for ebitda and profit after tax and the margin so the key issue is the margin trend should be maintained now the uh, key issue here is as the if you see here from fi24 uh, this is their revenue are roughly around 1800 crores they are expected to do around 3700 crore of revenue in next two years so that means uh, the revenue is nearly doubling over next two years and at 15% margins uh, which are likely to be maintained the eps will also nearly double over the uh, next uh, two years or so the point here is to be noted is that the interest expenses will go up because for all this expenditure uh, all this growth and all they are they are raising debt so they are expected to in fy26 they are expected to raise debt because you require capital to do all these things and the capital employed has also increased uh, so this is the one part which has to be seen across because that will uh, impact the earnings the cost of uh, cost of money the other point is that there is uh, if you require money either they will take debt or they will have to do uh, equity dilution so anything like that will have to keep it in mind so if you see here the cash flows now because of these interest costs and the requirement of Uh, expenditure on capex etc the cash flows are expected to be negative so it is expected that in fi26 they will raise a debt of around 800 crore this is what is expectations so which will reduce their uh, uh, net cash flow which is negative for fi25 so this is one factor which has to be kept in mind and if you see here at 3000 also it was expensive so uh this stock is now getting uh, fully priced uh, in terms of uh, value and there are risk in terms of uh, uh, requirement uh, cash flows issues now if you see here uh, it had made a high of around 3234 uh, uh, few months back in march and then it had corrected 
so it has broken through that declining trend line and uh, based on the results uh, on friday and saturday it had to clear cut break uh, clear cut uh, gap ups with high volumes so uh, it is uh, expected to reach uh, now expected to go higher from here based on the demand and other issues but it is becoming slightly overbought but not really out of control right now uh, so if you are holding it just keep holding it but you can't buy it fresh at these levels uh, so the point here is that order book is around 2 2.3 times fi24 uh, revenues but their revenues are expected to uh, double over the next 2 years so one has to keep watch on the order book especially uh, if you seen the eps for fi26 is expected to be around 45 so at the present price it is roughly at around a pe of around 70 so which is uh, fully valued in my opinion so not much to much value will be attained by chasing this stock i have finished we'll take questions now